were prepared for the major uh, ground I- ground invasion to dismantle Hamas. People have been talking about, you know, proportionate response. What is proportion? I say, well, the proportion is fulfill the mission, restore security to the citizens of Israel, restore, you know, dismantle terror. Terror is not allowed yeah. and remove the Hamas. Still imminent is a ground war into Gaza. Israeli troops still surround the border. So let's look at some of the fast facts to bring you up to date with what, what is happening so far. Israel is beginning the third week of war with Hamas after the firing of thousands of rockets and brutally killing civilians on October the 7th. More than 1,400 Israeli civilians and soldiers have been killed as well as 32 Americans and thousands of Palestinians. Over 200 hostages still being held by Hamas. Their families are still waiting and praying. No order has come yet for the ground invasion from Israel to begin. Over 120,000 Israelis are living away from their homes after evacuations in the north. Aid organizations from numerous groups in Israel, including our friends, the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, are providing food, shelter, and care to the wounded and displaced. And the Palestinians are beginning to get some aid through Egypt, but it's it's not enough to even touch the level of desperation for food, water, fuel, and medicine. And of course, there was some good news. Two American hostages, Judith and Natalie Ranan, after mediation from, from Qatar were released on Friday, as well as two elderly Israeli women. Yachaved Lifshitz, who is 85 years old, and Nurik Cooper, who is 79, were just released. Their husbands are still being held by Hamas. And you know, I just read something on a BBC report, and it said that when this beautiful 85-year-old woman was released, she turned and she shook the hand of her Hamas captor and spoke only one word, shalom, which means peace. You know, she and her husband have worked for most of their lives to help those within Gaza. What they do is they, if the someone in Gaza is suffering with cancer or heart trouble, where they can't get the treatment they need within the hospital in Gaza, then she and her husband take them into Israel to get the treatment that they need. They have given their lives to care for people. And even at this moment of desperation, she She made it clear that yes, initially when she was taken hostage, she was beaten up badly and had her jewelry taken. And yet as she was released by her captor, she turned and shook his hand and said, Shalom. And I was reading over one of my favorite Psalms again today, Psalm 121. This is, these are just verses three and four. And it's for you as well. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. You know, it's our commitment here at TBN not to simply pray for what's going on in Israel, although that is our commitment and we will continue continue to call the body of Christ to pray, but to let you know that God is there for you now. You might be going through some battle of your own, which is not on the national news, but it's very familiar to you. We want you to know that God is with you, that God is for you, and that God loves you. Now let's get some news from the front lines. And I will also be talking to one of America's great beloved pastors, Dr. Jack Graham, to to discuss how these events fit into the prophetic timeline and why it's so important that we pray for Israel. We'll be asking, where are we now? Well, we're gonna find out. One of the joys this year, uh, my husband Barry and I and a team from the US joined our TBN team in Israel and to, to film some, some Bible studies. And one of the friends I made, his name is Chaim Melspin, and Chaim has been sending videos. In fact, I wanted to let you know, if you want to follow Chaim on his Facebook page, you simply go to Aliyah 
Return Center. Aliyah, that's A L Y A L Y A H, I believe. Um, Return Center, and you'll get his up to the minute reports from the front lines. But he sent this to me recently. And so before I talk to Haim live, let's look at the last video that he sent me. Let's look at this. The book of Numbers says uh, when you go to war, in your land against an enemy who attacks you, then sound the alarm with a silver trumpet. Numbers chapter 10, verse 9. I want to ask if you'll send in a shofar or a silver trumpet. Just send it in. Uh, and we want to just hear the sound ring throughout the world. Normally, this is Aliyah Day. I mean, the, the schools and people would all be celebrating Aliyah, the return of the Jewish people. Right now, of course, schools are closed. People are in bomb shelters. Uh, as you probably know, about 750,000 Gazans are fleeing to the southern part. There's still like another 350 or something thousand, which are in the northern part, which the Hamas are trying to use them as um, human shields. Of course, we had to evacuate 14 additional communities near the northern border because Hezbollah in Lebanon is really starting to fire a lot on us. Um, we've been carrying out uh, responses, retaliation strikes to their missiles, rockets, mortars, small arms fire that's been happening for the last two weeks or so. And Israel, of course, we've evacuated 28 communities in the south. You know, the attacks that have happened, uh, still more facts are coming out. Like they actually, I understood, had capability to, to do chemical, biological warfare, to use chemical agent uh, against us. And uh, it didn't happen. I guess they didn't use it. Uh, maybe they thought it would it would hurt them too, but that is insane that they were going to use a, a chemical agent against us. And so, we saw that they released uh, two hostages, Yudit and Natalie Ranan, which is nice. They still have 210 hostages or so. I can't imagine what's being done to them. This is they are barbarians. I can't imagine. But I want to say this. Keep this quick. Okay, let's. Think of how Rachel in the Bible mourning is some is is a it's a picture it's a uh, a word picture okay it's a parable if you will Jeremiah thirty two verse fifteen thus says the Lord a voice was heard in Rama lamentation a bitter bitter weeping Rachel weeping for her children refusing to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus says the Lord, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, says the Lord, and they will come again from the land of the enemy. That's what I want to encourage you. Come on, pray with us. We're here, watchmen on the guard. Your watchmen standing on the guard. Pray that their safe return will happen quickly, that we'll be able to rescue them. And we're ready. We're in our Hummers. We're ready to go. Keep praying for us. Keep praying for the troops. God bless you from the front. My dear friend Chaim Milspin is in a secret location with special forces defending the tunnels. And, you know, the last time we were together, Chaim, you're known as Chaim the Galilean, but that's far from where you are right now. Tell us what is happening right now, even as we speak. Yes, uh, thank you for, for keeping the location secret. Yeah, it's, it is very, very dangerous. I mean, you know, the amount of booby traps that are being placed the amount of these tunnels, uh, that's our job is to dismantle the tunnel threat, uh, which is attack tunnels uh, crossing into the border. Uh, of course, you probably know and have seen that that even even bodies of Jewish people or, or even bodies of the terrorists have been booby trapped with explosives. And so our, our team here clearing out the bodies and I'm talking thousands of bodies. I've never seen so many dead people in my life. Wow. And uh, and it's and I've I've been in a couple wars, you know. And uh, and so it's it's been very tough. A lot of training, a lot of intense training. But yes, we're prepared for the major uh, ground uh, ground invasion to dismantle Hamas. People have been talking about you know proportionate response. What is proportion? I say, well, the proportion is fulfill the mission, restore security to the citizens of Israel, restore you know dismantle terror. Terror is not allowed, yeah. and remove the Hamas. And I. I had the privilege of meeting the prime minister today. You did? Uh, he came to speak to us. Yeah, today I was with him and, and he spoke to us saying, uh, guys, it's it, we're not changing our minds. We must dismantle terror and restore security to our borders and remove remove this terror threat. And it's very arduous, very dangerous. So when you're praying for Israel, you're praying for me, you're praying for my I friends, know. some of them already. And, uh, and, and so thank you for praying over there in what I call the war room. I'm on the front. <laughs> you're in the war room. 
But Chaim, <laughs> let me ask you, in the midst of everything that's happening with Hamas and then the, the threat from Hezbollah, how do you hold on to hope in the middle of all of that? I, I have to always read, like, you know, Psalm 91, for example, mm. and dwelling in the secret not about visiting the secret place. You've got to dwell in the secret place under the shadow of the Almighty all the time. And that's through declaring his word because it's a battle of the mind too. And I know that you know that everywhere in the world, the prince of Persia, I'm going to call it, yes. the prince of Persia is active. A demonic thing going on where people can choose to cheer on barbaric terrorism or they can choose to stand up for God's prophetic and peaceful and glorious plan, not only for Israel, the promised land where Yeshua, the Messiah, will reign and rule one day. But remember how Daniel decided to face that prince of Persia? He, that spiritual entity, he, and he prayed 21 days. There's people right now who are doing Esther fasts, like Esther strikes, people like Lou Engel, you know him, yeah. people like Mike Bick, people all over, all over the world. Of course, the I, I, International Christian Embassy Jerusalem and and uh, Return Ministries, Alia Return Center, many, many, many organizations mm -hmm. Are, are doing these Esther fasts. And I just wanted to say this to you. This helps. You said, how do we keep ourselves mm. straight? Well, think of Esther. She was, she was a slave. She was a captive. And we're thinking of these hostages. She was a captive. And what did she do? She could have just been silent. A lot of people are choosing to just be silent. They don't want to get in trouble. They don't want to get hot water. But then Mordecai says in Esther chapter 4, verse 12, you know, he says, don't think that you're going to escape in the king's house yeah. more than all the other Jews. If you hold your peace at this time, then deliverance will arise from another place and you and your father's house will be destroyed. Who knows if you're not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And heroes are arising right now. You don't know who a hero is when everything's all rosy. You know who the heroes are when everything goes downhill. And that is what people are doing. They're arising and praying for all the sons and daughters of Abraham yeah. right now. Well, just know, Chaim, we are committed to holding up your arms in this battle, and we will not stop until we celebrate together that this evil has been stamped out in the name of Jesus. And we continue to pray for you, my friend. Well, thank you. And for everyone who's been giving, thank you to the Emergency Aid Initiative. It's just amazing to see the love of people. Emergency Aid Initiative of the Aliyah Return Center of yeah. my charity and people and, and it's a blessing because we're able, our team, not me, I'm busy here, but my team, a whole, yeah. is able to help yeah. a lot of families uh, with no go, nowhere to go and food and shelter and clothing and everything. Okay, so that's so a Leah thank you Return for that. Center, people. Just continue to pray for him, yeah. give where you can, and we will, we will cover you, brother, and look forward to talking with you again. May, may the Lord protect yeah. you.